Hey, broadcasting live right now. What's up? Doing a daytime broadcast. Everybody come on up in here. Wait on everybody to get on in the room. Get my computer right. All right, how's everybody doing this afternoon? It's kind of early. It's kind of early. Some things I got to discuss to get off my chest. I couldn't even wait till Sunday. I couldn't even wait till Sunday. Every let, let, let people get on in this room. People are getting in the room now. Shout out to everybody getting in the room. Shout out to Denver. Uh, shout out to everybody worldwide. I got to discuss this situation here. All right. Come on in the room, everybody. People are piling on in here as we speak. All right. How's my sound? We Shout out to the UK. Shout out to Atlanta. I hope my Atlanta people got their tickets for the Mink Slide concert. Y'all see the, the link right below me? There's a couple of links while we're waiting on people to pile on in the room. If you're in Atlanta or in the surrounding areas, y'all click on that link to see Mink Slide live in concert. We're going to be there December 22nd. Everybody tune in. Get your tickets for that. Also under that, everybody, all of you should be hitting that Patreon. Hit that Patreon link and become a Patreon of the Tariq Radio Show so we can continue to do what we do here. Got it? And um, hit that like button. Hit the like button. Let us know that you in the house. Let us know that you in here. You dig? And hit that subscribe button. Y'all see that red button right there? Let me see which side. Which side is it? The red button right there. All right, hit that subscribe button. Everybody hit that subscribe button right there. Hit that subscribe button right there, folks. All right. What's up, uh, Kiko has an open booty hole. This nigga name is Kiko has an open booty hole. And this nigga gave a dollar and 99 cent. Nigga, you could have used that for some condoms for your, your, your man bay. We're coming up here with that bullshit. Shout out to the brothers in Kuwait and the military. Shout out to them. Hope you guys enjoyed. A lot of folks enjoyed yesterday's broadcast of Tariq Radio. Just talking about how these militia groups are plotting on us. Dig what's up, Quita McMillan? One of the mods in the house. So we're almost in here. I want to get cracking. When we hit a thousand people, then I can get right into it. I want to make sure that we are nice and full in here. But again, while we're waiting on that 1,000 mark, Everybody hit that Patreon below, all right? Everybody hit that Patreon below. You understand? What's up from St. Louis? Shout out to St. Louis. Shout out to St. Louis. Shout out to VA. Speaking of VA, there's a high school out there in Virginia. It was a racial beef. The white kids were fighting the black kids at this high school out there. I forgot the name of the high school, but that shit was serious. They were throwing blows. You dig? We almost had a thousand. What's up, um, One Good West? What's up, B Mac? But again, everybody hit that Patreon below. Become a Patreon because you know we we appreciate the support. Ah, ice cold water. All right, we're over a thousand. So let me let me get into it. Now, y'all know the situation with um, the white supremacist suspect woman, Teresa Klein, out there in Brooklyn, New York. And we've been going hard body trying to get that woman prosecuted. You know, we're going hard body. We were going hard body at the politicians out there trying to get that woman prosecuted, trying to get her charged. I want y'all to understand something. I'm not in this game to be on some woes me shit because nobody gives a fuck. And black society, we got this culture of cowardice where we just want to lay down and take abuse. And we think just whining about the abuse, getting it off of our chest is actually some type of action. We try to pretend that that's doing something. 
we think begging and pleading is doing something. And that's the goal, to just kind of beg and plead and get some attention. Get a couple of nigga trinkets, and we good to go. That's why a lot of these shea butter Negroes, when you argue with them, they start talking about how they were on the front lines somewhere, how they went somewhere and carried a sign and yelled. That ain't shit. We got to be strategic. We got to get off this attention whoring bullshit where we just do things for attention. We do things for nigga trinkets. And that brings us to this case. In this case of this child who was falsely accused by the suspected white supremacists of sexual assault, this woman put that little boy in a very dangerous position. I want y'all to understand, I was putting two and two together about this woman and her potential background. This woman looks like she was on some initiation to be down with one of these white supremacist groups. I broke that down, how these white supremacist groups, they have people cause a public conflict or target black folks in order for them to be initiated. So the Proud Boys and all those guys, every time they're around, there's always some type of racial incidents like incident like this. So I'm trying to tie all this shit in. I'm doing the homework. I'm doing the research. I'm keeping eyes open. I'm keeping eyes on the street open. We out here putting in work, trying our damnedest to make people safe, trying to keep people's eyes and ears open. And I get very frustrated when we do this and then some of the people that we try to represent undermine us. I'm, I'm really tired of that bullshit. Let me play the mother of this little boy, Jeremiah Harvey. Now, Jeremiah Harvey, the other day, they interviewed him because there was a rally that was out there. And they interviewed him and asked him, the, the, the white supremacist media asked, do you forgive the lady? No, I don't forgive her. He was out there with some soldiers. He was out there with some riders. He was like, no, I don't forgive her, as he should. He should say that. But the media, they kept on browbeating and just kept going. When it comes to us, they damn near force you to forgive these white supremacists. That's very important. And we have to learn not to go for that. They go out of their way to make us forgive these people. They they never do that to white people. They don't. They've never got one of the white women to forgive Bill Cosby. They don't get white people to forgive OJ. They don't forgive you for shit. They lock your ass up. So now Jeremiah and his mom was on Good Morning America, and boy the 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 eyes were bucking. Hold on, let me play this shit. Come on, thing. Come on. Come on, thing. Don't act funny on me now. Thing. All right, let me play it. Okay. 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 Hold on. This is the mother. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get it up in the camera. This is the mother. I don't know what her name is. They were on Good Morning America, and what they did on Good Morning America, they got their Negro to, to interview them, and that's another tactic. They get a black person to interview you to kind of make you feel some kind of camaraderie, or they'll get a, a person who's non-white to interview you to kind of draw that emotion out and, and get you to start talking that forgiveness talk. So this is the mother on Good Morning America today. Hold Apology on. to Jeremiah. Young man, I don't know your name, but I'm sorry. I accept her apology. I want unity. I don't want no harm brought to this lady. Do you accept her apology? Yes. Yes, I do. Friendship is the key. Hey, Mom, how are you feeling right now? I know. That is Apology. Her ass sitting up here sounding like Kanye right now. Unity is the key. Unity with who? Unity with who? The poor boy, the poor child, they're forcing him. He clearly doesn't want to say that he accepts that woman's apology. The little boy clearly doesn't want to go for that dumb shit, but she's forcing him to. 
I want, I'm going to play it again. I want y'all to look at him and look at her. She's over here looking at him, giving him the evil stare, like you better go along with this shit. So she's forcing the little boy to go along with it. He don't want to, he don't want to accept that woman's apology. She's talking like Kanye. I just want love and unity. Young man. I don't know your name, but I'm sorry. I accept her apology. I want unity. I don't want no harm brought to this lady. Do you accept her apology? Yes. Look at him. Yes, I do. You don't want to go for that. Hey, Mom, how are you feeling right now? This is going to take some time. It's going to take a lot of healing. Oh. Certainly will. Jeremiah initially said that he did not forgive Teresa Klein. As you can see from our conversation, he has since had a change of heart. He and his mother are hoping that this is going to be a lesson for people, that people are going to learn to be kinder. That's exactly what they wanted from that story. That's the narrative. They they were going out of their way to get them to talk forgiveness and accepting apologies. There's a reason why these media outlets keep going and drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling for a damn apology. People. This is why... I'm, I, I, I might just go on a mink slide tour because I don't want to be out here. Let me be real. I, I don't want to be out here pressing, going hard body at these fucking white supremacists and niggas out here playing. I don't want to do that if niggas are out here bullshitting, scared, and playing. God damn. We love getting around these folks whining and crying and trying to get sympathy and a couple of nigger trinkets. I'm out here going on hard body on the DA out there. I'm at these folks' necks. I'm going hard body every day. We're organizing other people to go hard body on these folks if they don't press charges. We going in. I don't want to do all that, put my energy, resources, and in going in on these people for these folks to just yank the rug from under us and cripple us. I don't want to be out here going hard body and mammies like that shoot us in the foot. You done fucked up the, the, the momentum now. So now she done got her ass on national television talking about she accept the apology. I don't want nothing bad to happen to this woman. No, you shot us in the fucking foot. So now they're like, well, shit, we, we don't have to prosecute her now. We don't have to lock her up now. But you see the mom, they, they, they forgave her. They don't want nothing to happen to her. So the mom doesn't want nothing to happen to her. So we're just going to leave her alone. That's exactly why they were doing that. Y'all got to, if y'all go through shit, y'all got to chill out on hitting me up because motherfuckers ain't serious. If you ain't serious, stop playing. Because niggas do all this old, that you'll cry and, ooh, look what happened to me. And then when people are out here smashing, going in on these white supremacists like we're supposed to, going in on the system, they over here, somebody's dangling a check at them. And these niggas are slowly back. The biscuit smell is getting real strong. We going hard body at these prosecutors, DAs, police chiefs, police unions. And these Negroes are creeping over here to the butter biscuits and the check. We got a culture of fucking cowardice out here, man. And I'm tired of it. We got a plantation culture out here where nobody, niggas ain't serious out here. Niggas love being up under white mommy, white daddy. You'll go so far with the shit. 
Niggas will go so far. You will whine and complain so far, but boy, they come around hugging you, kissing you, dangling a, little, a couple of nigga trinkets at you, then all of a sudden, well, all lives matter. I just want love. And, I just want unity. Unity with who? Unity with who? Unity with a woman who has a track record of racially targeting people in that neighborhood, you dumbass fool. That woman tried to get your kid killed doing that shit she pulled. And you up here, well, I don't want nothing bad to happen to a Lord Jesus. The fuck are you talking about? God damn. This plantation mentality has to go. Niggas have reverted right back to the plantation mentality where you are just offer your children up to massa for a couple of extra biscuits. That's a slave mentality if you've ever seen one. No other group does that. You don't serve your damn children up for slaughter just so you can get a couple of nigger trinkets. You die for your damn kids. You're supposed to die for your kids. You're supposed to be down to die for your children. We got this shit real twisted. We got that slave breeding, single mother mentality. And right there, with that woman, that fool, and I'm saying it like it is, that goddamn fool bucking her dumbass eyes on TV, forcing her child to be a, 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 a submissive to white supremacy, that's a single mother mentality. You will flip your kids for a check. Somebody's dangling a check at this woman, and all of a sudden, <laughs> love is the key. That single mother, and, not, and it's not just with those women. Because, again, that coon from the other day when the, the woman went up, his, went up in the apartment building trying to find out what building he was in and... Somebody said, be careful, it might be taken out of context. Take what out of context, dude? What the fuck y'all talking about? I mean what I'm saying right now. Fuck whatever context. I'm talking truth to power. And we don't have time to sit up and play tiddlywinks with words with niggas no more. We ain't got time for that stupid ass shit. That coon who had that white woman running all up at his apartment talking about what apartment you stay in. He was on that. Well, I don't want nothing to happen to it now. We have that feminine, submissive, crack your ass open for a check mentality. That woman, in that single act, her getting on TV with that I accept the apology. I don't want nothing bad to happen to her. You just yanked the rug from under our feet with the momentum. We were ha we were going in on that DA. Now, what, what the fuck can we do now? You just yanked the rug from under us now. So now there's a target on all the children's backs in Brooklyn and everywhere else. Because these niggas got that I want a check mentality. I'll serve up my family and my children for a damn check. That's a crack hole mentality. God damn. Understand, in, during antebellum slavery in this country, when the first black child was sold away from his family, that should have been the first and the last. When the first black child should have been was sold away from his family, that should have been the first and the last. The problem is niggas didn't rise up and kill everybody. They should have killed everybody. And, and, and if they died, so be it. They should have stopped that with their lives. Somebody, you having a baby and some white supremacists take your baby and take them on a plantation rape him, kill him, and make him work for the rest of his life. That should You should have killed everybody on that plantation. If they would have got you, so be it. But the fact that Negroes sat around and just went for the shit and made it a culture, you had a breeding culture where you would breed the goddamn kids and give them away, that became a culture within black society because you were a victim of white supremacy. 
It was a culture that was forced on you. And we still have the remnants of that funky, filthy, disgusting fucking culture. Well, you sell the damn kids for nigger trinkets. These people out here beating up black kids and niggas are just sitting around. Wait, 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 he shouldn't have had that BB gun. Like I said, my kids, my kids ain't worth no money like that. It ain't worth, my kids ain't worth that. My kids are not for sale. My children are not for sale. If you don't die for your children, what the fuck will you die for? If you won't die for your goddamn kids... Other mammals in nature will die for their fucking offspring. Other mammals in nature will die for their offspring. I saw, y'all saw the video clip I posted on Instagram of these white supremacists in Africa and they shot a baby elephant and the other elephants start running after them white supremacists. Them elephants, they knew there was danger. They knew they could have been killed, but they went after they ass. Elephants got more goddamn sense than you. If you kill a lion cub, they're going to chase after you. Even if you're shooting at it, they're going to chase after you. Like, I'm going to die with my fucking cub. You ain't going to kill my cub and walk around this bitch without me taking a swipe at you. And elephants, I'll take it to another level. I remember, I read a story, I think it was over in India somewhere. They killed a baby elephant. And elephants are very intelligent. Elegant, ele elephants are very intelligent. Nigga, they killed an elephant. I think they it was a village and they hit an elephant with a train and ran over by mistake. So a couple of days later, a herd of elephants came and stomped the whole village out. Them elephants came through on some revenge shit. Do you know how smart elephants and other animals are? Them elephants got revenge on that village and stomped the fuck out their ass. Same thing happened over in Africa too. Somebody killed a baboon or some shit over there and all the baboons came and beat the shit out of the, the humans. Goddamn animals have more sense than some niggas out here, man. Man, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do some more albums, cause niggas ain't ready. Cats ain't ready. Cats wanna go so far with it, but no, niggas ain't ready. They they niggas just want one or two people fighting the battles for them. Niggas ain't ready. That's why I'm a, I'm gonna engage in more hobbies, because I ain't gonna be no one man army out here by myself going after the white supremacists and niggas over here. Fucking around, you throw a couple of nigger trinkets and, and, and biscuits at them. And then all of a sudden, it's all lives matter. Because niggas are too comfortable with white supremacy. Shit. Niggas have become just way too comfortable with white supremacy. It's, white supremacy is just defeated, niggas. It's, it's too many niggas are defeated. I'm hella pissed. Man, we were going in on that damn DA. Boy, I was on his fucking neck all week. I've been on his damn neck. He's been trying to cop, please, send his coons out there to do some nigga explaining. Boy, I've been on that damn prosecutor that I've been on his damn neck all week. I haven't let him breathe. The minute he tried to tweet some shit, I'm on his ass. We up there got his office hot. We call him the office. We on his fucking neck. And this woman gets her ass on TV and just chop our legs off. Damn. Because people, these, these niggas have been broken, man. These adults, too many of these Negro adults have been broken, man. They've been broken and they don't give a fuck about these kids, man. Damn.
How much are tap shoes? I'm gonna go to Amazon and look for some damn tap shoes. We're gonna open for Kanye. We're gonna do a mink slide tour. We're gonna open for Kanye. Hold on. How much are fucking tap shoes? That's what I need. Hold on. Which one of these tap shoes do y'all like? Shit. Tell me which ones y'all like. They got the ones with the heel. They got one with a buckle. What? Which one should I get? The Oxford? Should I get the synthetic tap shoes off Amazon? What? I'm going to be a coon too. Fuck it. I'm going to be a goddamn coon. So that's the dick. You can't beat them. Join them. Shit. I'm out here fighting a damn one man battle. Where the white women at? Should I get the, the, the tap shoes with the buckle? Will that look good with my Make America Great Again hat? I'm going to go on a double date with Diamond and Silk. Because cooning, I guess cooning is the wave. Cooning is the wave right now. Standing up for your goddamn self. Going after these white supremacists. Oh, no, that's that's... You're an anomaly when you do that. When you sit up here talking about you accept somebody's apology, you put a target on all these children's backs. You don't, we don't understand getting on code because the code is cowardice. We have a code of cowardice. It's who can be the biggest fucking coward. Now this happened. This was this came out today down there in Florida. Speaking of children, the other day I was talking about how 13 and 11 and 13 year old boys got gaffled up by the police. Police was threatening to shoot them because they were playing with the BB gun, which is not illegal. Down here in Florida, there was some kind of altercation at a mall. There was a little black girl, 14 years old. They gaffle her up there. They pin her down, punching her all in the back. Look at this. That's a 14-year-old black girl. Let's play it again. Why are you hitting her? She can't do it. She can't do that. Her head's underneath her. Okay. And that's, that's her getting beat up by a race soldier, a 14-year-old child getting beat up, and the white supremacists are justifying it. And let me say another thing. Black folks, stop all that goddamn yelling. Stop all that damn yelling. <laughs> Stop that yelling. When they're beating your ass, just stop yelling. Yelling ain't going to do shit. Stop all that goddamn yelling and crying and screaming and all that. Stop all that. You yelling and, you know, stop. Why are you doing that? Shut the fuck up. If you ain't about that life, when you go out your house, expect to get your ass whooped. That's a little kid. I understand. When you go out your house, expect to get your ass whooped. Expect your children to get their ass whooped. And you better understand what kind of reaction you're going to have to it. You got to understand that. Your children might not come home. You better protect your children as much as you can. And you have to understand, if your children don't come home, you got to wait. You got to think of how you're going to react to it. And you got to prepare your family for how you're going to react to it. You understand? You got to prepare to react to it in a certain way. Some people will react differently. Some people will react in a cowardly manner. You understand? But when you go, we're in a system of white supremacy. So when you go out the house and you understand that, you move different. And you better come to terms and you better make peace and what you will have to do to protect your family, and I mean protect them with your life. You got to make peace with that. You got to make preparations for that. You understand? These people have waged war on us. We got to accept that. Black folks got this thing where you really don't want to accept that. When these people are beating the shit out of your kids, that that's... And justifying it, that's war. These people are waging warfare on you. You, you got to understand that these people are waging war on you. 
And these race soldiers are beating this little 14 year old black girl. Shea butter feminists, all you black feminists, you shea butters, where, where are your Me Too white feminist intersectional allies? Where are your allies? All you ass licking shea butter mammies who lick the cooch of every white feminist you can find and act as their guard dogs. They snap their fingers and make you jump at whatever movement they throw out. You're the ones barking for them. You're the ones sucking their ass, barking at Bill Cosby, barking at Nate Parker. They got you barking at every Negro when they snap their fingers. Where are they now? Now that they beat up a black woman, a little black girl, not even a black woman, where are your shea butters now? Where are the Jamila Lemuse and the Fraud Anissa? Where are you now? Where are your white feminist allies whose ass and tits you lick all the time? Where are they now? Since you give a fuck about black woman power and black girl magic, where, where are they now? How come nobody's standing up for the black girl magic now? When it comes time to stand up for these little girls getting their ass whooped, it's the brothers doing it. It's the whole tap niggas that's doing it. It was the whole tap niggas that was standing up for the Sandra Blands of the world. Where are the Jamel Hills and the Fraudinistas and uh, all of them? All the Me Too lackeys. Where are your allies? Where's all this intersectionality? Where is it? It ain't intersecting now. Where's the lady with the big old nose? I don't even know her name. Where, where's she at? Where, where are her allies at? The, the Me Too was started by a black woman. Okay, where are all the people at? All, all right, a black girl just got her ass whooped. Now, where they at now? Where they at, though? We got a culture of cowardice out here, man. No, where, where they at? When, when the sisters get their ass, well, where's Amber Rose? Since she had so goddamn much mouth about Bill Cosby, how he should die and all. Where are you at? Where are you at, Amber Rose? You had everything to say about Cosby trying to cake for white mommy. You ain't got nothing to say now. Y'all niggas prop that type of garbage up. These shea butters, and I've always said, they don't give a fuck about other black women. They don't give a shit about black girls. None of that shit. They care about licking white ass and sucking up to zaddy and getting a check. They will throw these babies under the bus to get a check, and some of these moist fuck niggas are just the same because they got that same moist feminine energy. These niggas got that same energy. But again, I'm cool, man. I'm tired. I can't I can't do this shit. And people are going to undermine me and others like me putting in work out here to bring these folks to punishment, that's the justice, to punish these folks, to punish these white supremacists. I don't want lip service. These folks are going to have to be punished. If they're not punished, they're going to keep doing it. You're enabling them. You're enabling them so you can get a couple of nigga trinkets. And we got to understand, man. That single mother mentality where you just crack them butt cheeks open for anybody who has a check. That's a cancer. It's a cancer that affects men and women. That single mother mentality. Whereas whoever has a check, fuck everybody. I'll use my kids to get a check. 
long as I get me a check. That little boy, when you look at the video again, that little boy, he clearly wasn't with that bullshit. He clearly wasn't. This is why I'm going to have to focus on mentoring young males, young men and girls too. I'm going to have to focus on the young people. The adults, too many black adults, the coon spirit has just eaten up their spirit and soul. I'm going to have to do some type of outreach where I can reach these children before your coon parents get to you. We ain't got no dads in a lot of these homes, these single mothers. They got the mentality, whoever has a check, I'm going to bow down. We're going to have to get some outreach programs. I will do it personally. I got to figure out how I'm going to do it. But we got to train our young warriors. We got to train our young warriors so they don't get neutered by the coons and mammies and bedwinches that are raising them. These coon, cowardly parents are cancerous to black society. I'm going to have to focus on these children. We're going to have to have a scared straight program for empowerment. We're going to have to have a scared straight program for the kids. It ain't going to be. Look, I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to be hard body letting these kids know what's up. Because sometimes when, the, when a kid sees a real one spitting, that stays with him for a minute. If you run across a real one, somebody really spitting some real shit, it's going to touch somebody. Somebody's going to feel that. And somebody's going to keep that with them. The problem is they've never had that. you got a lot of kids who grow up in a house full of, of girls, mammies. You grew up in a house full of them or dusty niggas. So you don't hear no real shit. When you look at the media... You see moist sucker shit day in and day out. So you're being inundated with bullshit all the time. So you're being prepped to be a coon or dusty or moist. Well, I'm going to have to get to these children so and get their minds right before the cooning gets at them. Because little kids, 14, 13, 14-year-old kids, they hit me up all the time. They hit me in the DMs. And they tell me some of the shit that their parents are trying to teach them. And they tell me some of the shit that adults try to teach them. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got to debrief these babies. I have to debrief them. And then they see shit on the news and they see stuff in the media and they hit me up like, hey, Mr. Tariq, man, Kanye did make some good points. No, he didn't. Whoa. No, he didn't. Let's back it up, child. No, he didn't. Don't you fall for that. That's another reason. They keep, they'll keep they throw Kanye out there to let him talk that stupid coon shit. And a little kid who don't know no better, they're like, well, damn, that kind of makes sense. So you start breeding little coons. Because these niggas' parents ain't telling them no damn different. The parents are somewhere sucking off the white boss. Oh, my God. But this mentality where we want to get around white mommy and white daddy and start crying and performing, oh, Lord, I'm so hurt. This is so traumatic. And the check is right there dangling. The, the check is right there in the background dangling. Oh, dear Lord, dear Lord. So do you forgive? Well, I, I don't know. Um, well... Forget, the Bible says I should forgive. You know, I, I accept the apology. I don't want nothing bad to happen to nobody. Oh, my God, man. And, and that, that mentality... That mentality has been around for a while. This whole thing where you, you can pay niggas off and they'll get on the coon train. And, you know, we saw... A lot of it with Rodney King. Remember? During the L.A. uprising, 
when it was too late. See, the when cats had turned up because it was really bigger than Rodney King. Rodney King was just the, the final straw. The whole thing, the L.A. uprising in 92, it wasn't about Rodney King. They tried to make it, make it seem like it was the Rodney King riot. It was Rodney King was the last straw. Rodney King was the last straw. Us on the streets, we knew that it was bigger than Rodney King. This wasn't about no Rodney King. People kind of made him the symbol of it, but it was way more. There was a lot of shit going on out here in the streets. So when cats turned up and started yanking motherfuckers out the cars and giving them that work, they willed that nigga out. They willed Rodney King out here talking about, well, um, can we stop it? Um, can we all just get along? Because with Rodney King, he had got chipped up. Oh, hold on. With Rodney King, they wrote a check for his ass. Rodney King came out there with a brand new suit. That nigga got a little texturizer in his hair. So they, they papered him up. He, he was papered up. So he came out there with all that, can we just get along? And, and I want y'all, he was real nervous when he said it. I want to see if I can play it. But Rodney King was very nervous when he said it. He, that nigga had um, baby hair and shit. You dig? Hold on, my lady. Um, chicken enchiladas. All right, my lady's picking up some food. I hate when people peanut be asking me a, most, a million questions back to back. What you want on it? You want green sauce or red sauce? You want some chips or some beans with it? Yes. God damn it. All right. This, this Rodney King. Hold on. I just want to say, you know, can we can we all get along? Can we can we get along? Um, can we stop making it making it horrible for for the for the older people and the and the and the, and the kids? That nigga was so nervous. <laughs> Rodney, he didn't know how to be a coon. See, back let me say, back then, back then, being a coon was dangerous. That's why Rodney was so nervous. See, being a coon was dangerous back then. Because there were repercussions. People were mad at Rodney King, by the way. I'm telling you, this, Rodney, he couldn't really come back in the hood or no shit like that after that. Because the, the whole uprising was way more than Rodney King. So when he was doing that cooning, um, can we, can we all just get along? He was nervous because he knew that the block was hot on his ass. You understand? He knew that shit, that, that revoked his past. We didn't play that coon shit where you got a bunch of coons running around like we do now. Cooning is the wave now. Back then, you get fucked up. You got to go into witness protection if you were a coon. Back then, being a coon is the wave now. Being a coon is normal now. Being a coon in L.A. was very dangerous. Nigga, you get him the fuck up. Because a coon is synonymous with a snitch. A coon and a snitch goes hand in fucking hand, man. A coon and a snitch goes hand in hand. If you a coon out here, you get rolled all the way the fuck up. You better go to witness protection or some shit. You did? That nigga did all that cooning. They fucked his money up and died in a swimming pool. That nigga died. But that whole thing where everybody... What the fuck is this? Hello? Um, this is me. Who's this? Hi, Karen. Can you call me back in 30 minutes? Okay, okay. Because I'm, I'm doing the live broadcast right now. That's fine, yes. And are, are, are they going to send um, an assessor to come by the house, by the way? Yes, yes. Damn. Okay. Okay. Y'all don't cover that? Okay. 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 Well, okay. Give me a call on Monday. We'll discuss on Monday. Thank you.
That's the, my insurance company. I got rodents in my house. No, no matter. I got rodents in my house. And these fucking mice are eating up my pipes. These goddamn mice. Because I got all types of rodents around the house. They're eating through my pipes. And there's water leaks all over my, my, my house. And it's dripping in the house. And it's fucking up the walls. These mice are tearing me up over here. So that was the insurance company. They were like, well, yeah, we don't cover rodents. Really? I'm paying you assholes all this fucking money? Damn. I'm paying the asses all this money. I should have lied. I should have said, well, shit. It was a baby earthquake over here or something. Damn. So they don't cover all this shit. It's costing me a grip. These rodents are tearing my house up, man. So what, what I did in some parts of the of the house, I, I've gotten copper, I've gotten copper um, pipes because there's a this is when we moved in there was some kind of pipes in here it was it was like a plastic kind of pipe I forgot the name of it the guy the the, the people were telling me what kind of um, things it were it was <sighs> get cats and I hate cats I hate cats with a passion I hate cats. Yeah, but they they drink the water from the pipes. So what's good for the damn PVC, right? Right, 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 right. Those PVC pipes. They're sturdy, but they be eating through the shits. So what's good to get the rat? We I've had pest control people come up there with rat traps, but, you know, you catch one, then what the fuck? I got the, the old-fashioned mouse traps. Should I put rat poison up there? Then I have a bunch of stanky-ass dead rats up in the house? Mothballs? What, 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 else, what else is good to keep mice and rats out of your attic? Because, again, I stay, you know, y'all see my backyard is big and there's trees all over the place. So there's always possums and raccoons and coyotes running around my backyard. So it's like the wilderness back there. You know, they're getting in, you know how, you know, you know, mice can kind of, you know, squeeze their little bodies in any damn thing. Get fox urine, put mothballs, so mothballs, Repel mice. Get a lizard. You know, I don't want no damn lizard. Peppermint oil. I think they call Ghostbusters. Somebody said get the crispy doll. Peppermint is good to rid mice. You sure the peppermint just won't be running around with fresh breath? I don't want no cat. Plus, I got my, my kids be terrorizing the damn cat. You dig? Know? And plus, the, the 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 mice are up in like the attic and like not in the crawl spaces where the pipes are. So the cat ain't gonna be up there. Because what happens, uh, the pest control guy said they kind of crawl up trees, because I got vines and shit all over the house. So they climb up there and kind of slip in like little crevices in the house, you know? We're going to see that Halloween movie tonight. I want to see the... Yeah, I don't like cats. I don't like... Cats are nasty to me. I don't like cats. I, I hate the smell of cat shit. Because you, you go in people's houses who got cats and you can, you can smell if they got a cat. I don't like cats. I do not like cats. Peppermint oil. Okay, I'm going to look into some of this shit y'all saying. Peppermint oil... You did. All right, but um, but anyway, back to what I was saying, man. I don't want to be on here too too long. I just had to touch on that, um, man. Look, I, I'm gonna have to just you know, 
I'm gonna have to wait till everybody else is ready to really start getting getting serious and going hard body, you know. Because sometimes I'm just out here. I feel like I'm just out here on my own going after these white supremacists for real, for real. It's just every time they dangle a check in front of a nigga's face, the tap shoes turn up and you dig. I'm, I'm going to have to wait till everybody else gets on point. I got to wait till everybody else get on code. So I'm going to probably, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more albums until everybody gets on point. Let me go on tour. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a single with Layla and Bree and all them. You dig? Because shit, I'm, I'm going to just have to take some time and just do some other things and just wait till everybody ready. And people say they ready. See, niggas say they ready until, what, what this is? Ooh, well, the eyes start bucking. Niggas are ready until a check comes through. Ooh, Lord Jesus. All lives matter. See, people say they're ready. Right until a check comes. And the check has to come from white mommy and white daddy. With that little boy out there in Brooklyn. Man, we were planning on getting some money for him. We could have had money for him. Man, we were planning on getting some money for that kid. We could have got money for that boy. We could have got some money for him put aside for college. We could have done that. Because the boy is very smart. He's a straight-A student from what I understand. We were already working on getting some popping for that little boy. Till his dumbass mammy fucked it up for everybody. His GoFundMe is up to 17 Gs. Yeah, we could have really got that off. We could have got that off and made sure he was good. But that mammy, somebody came with a white daddy came with a check. They, they, they waving a check around in her face. They dangling something. Some, some lawyer, somebody done got to her and let her know there might be a check on the horizon. So she had on the can we all just get along outfit. Y'all better watch that. Whenever y'all see some black folks who done been harmed by white supremacy at first, boy, they got the the Black Lives Matter t-shirt on. They got the Fight the Power shirt on. They got the Public Enemy shirt on. Boy, they got the black fist up. And boy, when you see them step to the podium with a suit on and a fresh hairdo and some new bundles with some baby hair, you already know what's coming. When you see them step up and they get interviewed, they got on their little suit and the baby hair slicked down with the edge control gel, all of a sudden, um, can we all just get along? Can we all just stop it? I don't want to see nobody get harmed. Oh, they get the white, white supremacy makeover. Oh, my God. Man, man, man. Oh, my God. All right, look, man, look. They ain't giving no check. And, and that's another thing. The, the check might not even be that big, but the fact that you get those, those hugs from white mommy and white daddy. See, that's another thing. That's another thing. Not only because the check she's probably going to get, it ain't going to be big. And that's another thing, family. They're going to stop. The, the well is drying up. They're going to stop this shit where they paying niggas off. I know in Wisconsin, I think out there, the governor put a cap on how, how much you can sue somebody for. I think it's like $250,000 is a cap. They're starting to put caps on some of these lawsuits. They're like, look, we ain't going to keep cashing y'all niggas out because y'all niggas done got a little too comfortable with that. Y'all niggas done gave up your children. So y'all become too comfortable with that. You understand? Know okay. They become a little bit too comfortable with that. There's one thing that I couldn't respect about certain white supremacists. And I say this very carefully. Respect meaning action, not them as people, but action. The action, not them as people. Let's be very clear. But 
their action. One thing I could, one action I can respect coming from the white supremacists is that they will die for what they believe in. They're willing to die and kill for what they believe in. Like the Clive and Bundy clique. Those dudes, the government told them they can't have cattle on certain land. So their cattle was threatened. And they risked their lives. They put their lives on the line because they told them their cattle couldn't be on a certain part of land. So they went out there with guns and said, fuck that. Let alone their children. Forget about their children. Their cattle. They went out there and said, fuck that. We're going to stand off with you. We're willing to die. So you don't tell us what the damn do. You're not going to control us. Because if it's cattle, then it's going to be something else tomorrow. So we'll, we're going to come at you now. And again, they kept having these little standoffs. Some of these guys got killed. Some of these guys had standoffs with the government. They got killed. But they stood up for what they believed in. I respect that. I can respect that. Especially their children. That's why... You don't see the white supremacists beating up on white children. You don't see race soldiers beating up on white children. I've had, ne do you know I've had Negroes sitting up here justifying that little black girl getting beat up? Well, I, well, as I used to be a cop and these niggas and the way she had her hands, um, she can't have her hands like that because that can be perceived as a threat. I've had Negroes sit up here. Well, if she just did what she had be told and don't be resisting, I've had Negroes say that. That's cowardice. Because you don't see them beating up white children like that at all. If a white kid shoots up a school, they're not beating on no white kid. A white kid can do anything. A white kid can commit mass murder. The cops ain't beating on them. Show me footage of a white 13 or 14 year old being beaten by a police officer. Show me the footage of it ever happening. Show me footage of a 13 or 14 year old child being beaten, who's white, beaten by a cop. I challenge y'all to show me that. I challenge you to show me any footage of a white child getting his ass whooped by a police officer. It doesn't exist. Even if they shoot up a school, even if they commit mass murder, even if they burn down a house, they ain't beating up no white kid. They rarely beat up white adults, let alone a white child. Dylan Roof ain't no kid. That's the closest thing people can go to. They might find a white 18 or 19 year old who still didn't get beaten. They just simply don't do it. Why? Because white society will start bucking back at cops who do that. They will put their lives on the line. They won't let you beat their children like that. They will die for their fucking kids. Negroes will sit up here yelling, no, Lord Jesus, you're going to learn, you're going to learn today. You out there telling the cops to keep doing it. Why does my wife keep texting me? Everybody texting me. This shit going on, the leaky roof, people coming in out my house. I'm at home. I'm at home. Let me go get She asked me where I am. All right. Oh. Sorry about that. My wife texting me all these goddamn questions. All right. All right. Sorry about that, guys. 
What's that? Ennis, what, is Ennis in here? So I do need a vacation. Shit. I do need a vacation. I need a sound guy. Who? I need a sound guy either here in D.C. Any sound guys in here? For film production, we need a sound guy. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be filming in DC next week. I need a sound guy, somebody who can record audio. Y'all know professionally. I ain't talking about niggas show up with a damn iPhone and try to record. Is Ennis in here? Where is Ennis? That bitch ass nigga better not be in here. He probably he's probably in here lurking. His moist stalker ass. He's probably in here lurking. Hold on one second. Speaking of Venice. Hold on. Look at this is this is some of the paperwork on Ennis, by the way. Y'all remember I was telling you I had to take Ennis to court. That's some of the paperwork on Ennis. That's that's it right there. This this is the paperwork on Ennis right here. Alright, this nigga had to go to court for stalking another man. Alright, so that's the shit that's on on record down in Florida. Look at it. That's ain't that pathetic. A grown ass nigga. A grown ass nigga had to be taken to court for stalking another man with moist bullshit. And as you need to be ashamed of your damn self. A grown ass and he's down there in Florida. There's a couple of moist fuck niggas that follow me down in Florida. There's a couple of them whose uh, niggas always making videos about me and shit. And these niggas down in Florida, they're beating up black kids down there. And y'all fuck niggas on the internet stalking other men. And they're beating up black kids in Florida. And niggas out here shooting up ex testosterone or whatever his name is. That's a culture of cowardice. That is a culture of cowardice. Let me show y'all some more Ennis paperwork. Hold on. Look at this shit. This is some more paperwork on Ennis ass. Oh, Fleece Johnson ass nigga. Look at this. Look at this shit. Order extending injunction for protection against domestic violence. No, repeat of violence. Dating violence. Sexual violence. See, all of that shit goes in the same realm. Because they assume... It's a woman stalking a man or some shit, or a man stalking a woman. This is why I told you I had to answer all these questions about sexual abuse, dating abuse. <laughs> you understand? You goofy ass nigga. Nigga, you are, you are, a sh your family should be ashamed. My God. If they had to issue a court order to stop this nigga from being moist. That nigga's a booty bandit. They had to issue a court order to stop that nigga from being moist. A man, a grown ass, musty nigga stalking another man. And that nigga's in Orlando, right out there by Zimmerman. You stalking another man and Zimmerman right down the street from your dumb ass. Go play with that nigga booty hole. Shit. All right. Anyway, y'all. But, uh, but like I said, man, look. There's only so much I can do, man. Dude, there's only so much I can do. I, I can't go hard on these folks, man. I can't slice and dice and... Slay these fuckers if people are going to undermine us. Dude, I, I can't be undermined by, by people that we're supposed to be protecting out here. I, I can't do that, man. I, I can't do that. But it, we, We're going to have to wait until, until the real ones reveal themselves. We're going to have to wait until some of the real ones reveal reveal themselves you dig any look family let me get out of here look look below hit that patreon family hit the patreon link let's keep things going hit the patreon link below there's thousands of y'all in here everybody should be a patreon today 
If you have not hit Patreon, everybody become a Patreon today. So I need to go on vacation. And I, when I go on vacation, I'm going to run right back into some white supremacy. That's the thing. When I go on vacation, I, I, I'm still seeing white supremacy. If I go somewhere, I see the dark people on the bottom, the white people on top. You, you dig? Everywhere I go, I'm going to see some white supremacy. You dig? Same issues. And when I get there, I'm like, oh, shit. I know. I tried when I went to Samoa for vacation, and then while I'm talking, everybody hit that Patreon. I remember going to Samoa on vacation, remote island of Samoa. There was a white supremacist there who was my tour guide. We ordered a tour guide, and a white supremacist pulled up. And listening to him, he sounded like the alt right when I was talking to him. You did. We got to understand, and that's, somebody said something very interesting in the room. We got to understand when we have enemies among black society. We got a lot of enemies within black society. We're going to have to root those enemies out. We got a lot of enemies, people who are just sitting around waiting to undermine black society. People who don't have no code whatsoever. That mammy, buck dancing, single mama mentality where the chick is more important than your children. It's more important than your dignity. It's like, let me get my little check. Eyes need my check. Fuck everybody else. We got enemies among us. We got niggas out here in Florida, like the Ennises and these other fuck niggas out there who sit up and let these white supremacists like Zimmerman run around. You let the white supremacists who shot that brother over the handicapped spot, he run around. They, they reluctantly charged him, but he's out. He got out on bail. You have the race soldiers beating up black girls, but these moist niggas want to target rappers, other black folks. You want to stalk other dudes. That's a moist feminine energy there. We got broken... Slave bucks out here. Gami, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you a white supremacist trolling? Hiding a child. Child where? Where is a child being hidden? What are you talking about? Taste of Soul tomorrow. I wanted to go to Taste of Soul. I am um, I'm rehearsing. The band is rehearsing tomorrow. It's all about Atlanta, folks. Y'all get y'all mink slide tickets. Y'all get your mink slide tickets, family. All my Atlanta people, get your mink slide tickets, family. You dig? We is our own worst enemy. Yeah, cooning for cash. Yes. Hit that Patreon. That's right, Father Lion. Hit that Patreon, brother. Hit that Patreon, Father Lion. All right. Anyway, man, let me get out of here, dude. I'll talk to you guys Sunday. Y'all be good.